This week's episode of RBTV is brought to you by rblibrary.com. Real basic made really simple. So here's the deal. rblibrary.com features a ton of information for names you can trust. Site has to definitely be one of the most valuable tools in the Real Basic community. They have step-by-step guides and tutorials you can purchase and download right to your desktop. They cover everything from networking to game design to databasing. rblibrary.com is just fantastic. I can't wait to see what they come out with next. So definitely, guys, go check them out, rblibrary.com. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to RBTV episode 3. I'm your host, George Bonish. For those of you who have never tuned in before, RBTV is a video podcast covering some of the latest tips and tricks for the real basic development environment. So Real World Conference 2007 recently uh, occurred in Austin, Texas. And I got tons of emails from uh, you guys telling me about how you heard about RBTV there. And uh, I just wanted to thank all of you for the wonderful emails and all the support you have been giving me. I got a lot of questions um, and ideas about what I should do in future shows and uh, I thought on today's episode I would go ahead and take one of those questions and cover it and answer it. Uh, It makes a pretty good episode. So here I have a letter from Ben in New York. Uh, Ben says, hey George, I was wondering if it was possible to save the size and position of a window even after my application has been quit. Well Ben, it is possible and it's quite easy actually and uh, that's actually going to be a pretty good topic for today's episode so if you have Real Basic installed go ahead and open it up and let's get started so the first thing we want to do before we even start let's go ahead and save our project so we have a nice hard copy of it so you can uh, go up to file and save I'm going to name it RBTV episode 3 and you can just hit save Okay, so the next step, let's go ahead and uh, rename window 1 here to something a bit more appropriate. You know, in episode 2, I talked about how important it is to um, have a common naming scheme throughout your project to uh, to make it a lot easier for you and anybody else that's going to be looking at your code um, to follow along with the code and figure out exactly what's going on. So go ahead and select window 1 here. I'm going to name window 1... W main and again W stands for window and main is just the main window and you can name it anything you want anything that you uh, feel comfortable with so go ahead and open up uh, window main here and let's go ahead and change the title of, uh, of the window so make sure window main is selected there and come over here to our property value pane and uh, select the title property now let's change the title property let's change the title to um, let's see RBTV episode 3 hit return to change that and you'll notice uh, it's got reflected right up here Uh, let's go ahead and save that alright so in today's project what we're going to be doing is um, creating a few static text objects here on window 1 that are going to be dynamically updated um, using our code um, that's going to give us information about the window properties uh, like the width and the height and uh, the x and y locations relevant to the, the screen of the operating system um, and along with those, we're going to go ahead and cover how to uh, save those window properties out to a file um, so the next time the application opens, we can actually load those from the file um, and, and restore the window to how it was when the user closed the application. So the first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and add a, a new control here. It's called the group box control. You'll notice it right here. And what the group box control does is... Uh, it's, it's more of a visual control uh, that allows uh, you as a developer to group a whole bunch of controls together um, and give them a title um, which actually makes it a bit easier for the for the person that's going to be using the application to to see kind of a larger category of controls that allows you to separate them much easier um, so go ahead and double click on the group box property and go ahead and drag it up to the top left there so that it snaps uh, snaps to the grid Let's go ahead and expand it right here to the other side. And let's do it about a height of 160. That sounds about good for now. Um, and the group box control, can, like a lot of other controls, contra- contains a caption property, um, which is going to be displayed right here. You'll notice it's set to untitled by default. And you can see it over here in, um, in the property value pane. So let's go ahead and change that to something a bit more appropriate. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change this to window properties and you can hit return to save that. Go ahead and save the project. Um, and so now 
uh, you can see there's just a little uh, a little box right around um, right around here and it's gonna look a little bit different in Windows or Linux but they're all gonna pretty much do the exact same thing um, and what we can do if you remember from episode 2 I covered how you can uh, embed controls within another control uh, group boxes allow us to embed controls within itself um, so if we need to move them all we can just grab uh, this title here or this caption here and just you know drag it along the window and all the controls embedded within it will go ahead and follow um, so I'm just going to go ahead and run this for you guys just so you can see what it, it looks like when the program is run um, and again you can just hit this little uh, this little play icon or run icon right up top here you can see it looks pretty much the same um, you know there's n there's no way to interact with it you can't uh, you can't highlight the text or anything like that um, now let me go ahead and uh, quit this really quick now watch whenever I I run the application again you'll notice that the window defaults to the m to the upper left hand side of the screen I'm gonna go ahead and do that and just you'll notice you see it starts right up here and, and you'll notice I always kinda move the window here into the middle and it gets a little bit annoying after a while if uh, you know if you're using the application um, since it's not gonna be saving your position so let's go ahead and quit this and um, let's add uh, four static text objects here that are going to give us our, our window position and size. So go ahead and scroll down here on the control pane and locate the static text control. Let's go ahead and double click on this to add it to the window there. Let's do it another time, another time, and another time. And go ahead and position these however you see fit. I'm just going to go ahead and bring it right there. Maybe there, and one there, and maybe let's drag these. And if you remember, you can hold down Control, or if you're on a Mac, Command to select more than one control. Let's go ahead and move it right about, I'd say here. That looks about good. And uh, and we're gonna go ahead and expand these to right about a width of 112. So I can manually enter this in here, 112, and you'll notice it just drags it to the end there. And let's do the same with these, 112, and let's move them over a bit to the left. Perfect. All right, so now we have enough room for um, for our numbers to get displayed here. Um, and let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, rename these to what each of the fields are going to be. So for this top left one, go ahead and select that and come over here to our text property and click on the text property there. And let's change this to width. So what we're going to have displayed here is going to be the width of our window. And hit return to set that property. Uh, this lower one, let's go ahead and change this to height. And uh, this top right one, let's make it left. And by left, I mean how far left, uh, how far from the left the window is, and the way Real Basic works is it's going to give you um, a number of pixels. Um, so let's say you know a hundred pixels. So it's going to be a hundred pixels away from the left-hand side of the screen, um, and it's also you can uh, you can think of it as just an X property. Um, if you are familiar with that in mathematical terms, and then for this one, let's go ahead and do the top the Y property. And just like the left, the top um, value is going to be how far um, from the top of the screen in the operating system that the window is. And again, that's going to be returned to us in, uh, in a pixel value. So you can go ahead and deselect that. Let's save that and uh, run the application just to show you what it's going to look like on the screen. So you'll see there's still nothing uh, going on there. You can't see uh, any numbers, nothing updates yet. And the window is still not resizable yet. So go ahead and quit this. And uh, let's enable the resizing properties of this window. So make sure window main is uh, selected. Come over here to our live resize and resizable, resizable checkboxes. So let's go ahead and enable these two properties. Um, and you'll notice here our little resizing widget appeared. And if you watch here, I'll go ahead and... Uh, enable this and disable it, you notice it pops up. Go ahead and save that. So now that we have these four static text objects, let's give them uh, let's give them some appropriate names. 
Um, let's uh, select this width one here, come up to the name, and I'm going to go ahead and put ST for static text. Let's do width. And I'm going to go ahead and name this ST height. It's going to be ST left. And this ST top. Alright, so now everything is named appropriately and we can easily reference each one of these static objects within our code. So now that we have all the properties set and the design field, let's go ahead and switch to the code view of window 1 here. And you can just double click anywhere on the window and it'll switch there. Alright, now we're in the open method of window main. Um, and uh, what we're going to want to do in the open window here is set an initial value to our, uh, to our four static text objects here. And uh, to do that, it's going to be real simple. Um, to explain to you a little bit about how we're going to get the data from the window, each window class contains a left, top, width, and height uh, property value that you can just easily call uh, and will return an integer to you. So what we're going to do is reference the left, the top, the width, and the height properties of uh, window main here and actually set those values to the static text on uh, on the main page or on on the main window. Uh, so in order to do that, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start with the with the uh, width property there. Um, and to do that, let's let's reference st width dot text. And again, what this is, this is going to reference the text property or the text value of this static text object right here. So by doing this, we're going to be changing what is displayed here. So let's go ahead and hit space there. And again, the equal operator is what what uh, actually makes that change. Um, and since we're going to want to keep the word width colon here, we're going to want it to say you know width colon space and then a number. Um, so in order to do that, we need to again type uh, type in the word width colon and then a space. And to do that, we're going to add open quotes there and type width colon and space and close the quotes. Now, it's important to have the space here otherwise your number is going to look a bit off plus and then here's where we're going to reference the width value of the window and and as I mentioned in episode 2 each object contains a me property or a me value and uh, whenever you use the me value you're basically just referring um, you're referencing the object itself that's calling this so basically when I say me dot width I'm saying window main dot width um, now me dot width is going to be an integer value and we can't set um, an integer to a string which is the dot text here so we're going to have to use the string function or the str function that I talked about in episode 2 uh, to convert this integer uh, to a string so we can just do str and then open parentheses and then come to the end here um, and uh, and close that off so let's go ahead and save this and I'll run it and as soon as we uh, run this and it opens up you're going to notice that there's going to be a uh, a width and then a number right there and that number uh, that's going to be referenced is going to be in pixels so let's go ahead and do that and here you'll notice 300 so the window right now is 300 pixels wide right here now if we resize it it's not going to change because we only have that code in the open event so it's only calling as soon as the window gets opened so let's go ahead and close this and if I switch back to window main here um, and select it, you'll notice if we come over here, our width is 300. So that property is correct. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the height and the left and the top here. So let's come back here. We can just uh, do st height dot text equals height plus string me dot height and then st top dot text equals Let's see, it was x plus string me dot top. And the final one is going to be st left dot text equals left x plus string me dot left. Alright, so let's save this and run, and all our values should be properly associated. And there we go. So we have a width of 300 and a width height of 300. And you'll notice it's a square here. 
and we have a left of 10 and a top of 50. So now you may be wondering at what point does it measure this left and what point does it measure the top. So the left is going to be measured by this left border here of the window, this entire left line here. And the top is going to be measured right at the top of this this little menu bar here, this little title bar here. It's going to be right there. And now we have a, a top of 50, but um, you'll notice it's actually a pretty small distance from the the top of my, my menu bar here, but it's actually measuring from the very top of my screen, so all the way up top here. So this is about 50 pixels, and this space right here is going to be about 10 pixels. Well, it is 10 pixels. So we can go ahead and quit this. Well, actually, before we quit that, you'll see um, I'm going to be dragging in and still not resizing any. Or, I mean, it's not uh, renaming any of these to to update the, the size and the position of them. So let's go ahead and do that in the next step. So let's quit this. Um, and um, let's go ahead and switch our methods from the open method to the uh, to the resizing method here. And you'll see a resized and a resizing. So the difference between resized and resizing um, is that when a user is actually in the process of resizing the window, that's when uh, this resizing value is going to be called. So so basically, uh, while the user is resizing, this is going to be called many 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 times so that's how we're gonna have it live update and then the resized um, event or size me resized method is gonna be as soon as the user has resized it and let go of their mouse um, that's when this resized event is gonna be called so for the resizing um, event we really don't need our uh, our left and our top positions to be updated since they're not really moving the uh, the window up and down they're just going to be moving the width and the height of it so we can just copy these two property or these two lines of code here um, and come over here to our resizing event and just paste these two in and let's go ahead and save that and so now as soon as the user starts resizing the window this is going get, to keep getting called keep getting called keep getting called um, and it's going to update uh, the static text that is displayed on the window there. So let's go ahead and run this and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So you see I can still move this um, and nothing gets updated. But watch these two values right here as soon as I start uh, moving the window. You notice my width gets bigger as I move it bigger. And my height gets bigger as soon as I move it bigger. Now my mouse has not has not lifted yet. My mouse click has not lifted, so the resized property hasn't been called yet. Um, but as soon as I stop here, and now I'm lifting my mouse right now, now is when the resized property would have been called. And let me go ahead and uh, I'll throw a message box in there just to give you guys an idea of, uh, of what I'm talking about. So I'll go ahead and put here message box resized. Now message boxes are a good way to kind of debug your program without actually debugging your program. If you're trying to figure out where you're getting stuck at executing something, just stick a message box there and you can see if you're even ever getting there. So let's go ahead and run this here. And you'll notice I resize and the message box isn't coming up yet. But as soon as I let go of the mouse, then it was called. I can do it again. Let go of the mouse, and it was called. So you can see the difference between resized and resizing. So if you need to do something specific here, you can. If you need to do something specific here, you can. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this uh, and save the project. So now um, we have our width and height uh, covered. Let's go ahead and do the left and the top. So now there's not a, um, a moving event, but there is a moved event. So as soon as the user moves the window um, and lets go of the mouse, this move event here will get called. So when that happens, we're going to want these two lines of code here to get updated. So we're going to want the, the left and the top position of the window to get updated. So let's go ahead and copy these two and come over here to the moved event and paste them in. And uh, so now every time the user moves the window, this line of code is going to get called and it's going to update uh, the properties that are displayed on the screen. So let's go ahead and save and run that. Again, right now we're left 10 pixels and top 50 pixels. So if I move this here, you notice it's still 10 and 50, but as soon as I let go of the mouse, they update. So now I'm 372 pixels from the left of the screen, 243 from the top of the screen. If I move it up, 44 pixels from the top, still 373. And you'll notice my width and height have not changed since I haven't resized the window, but as soon as I do that, 
everything still works and my left and my top remain the same so let's go ahead and quit this um, and we can close the window main code view here so now I'm going to introduce a new concept called modules and now what a module is you can think of it sort of a a portable container for pretty much anything you want to add to it. You can add uh, methods, you can add uh, functions, properties, events, pretty much anything within Real Basic uh, you can add to it. And it's a good way to kind of to kind of group um, group functions or properties that are going to be related to each other together, um, so that they can access themselves, but they can't be accessed uh, through other places in the program and it, it may sound a bit confusing now but you'll understand a bit more as soon as we start working with it so the first thing we're going to do uh, switch to the project pane here or project tab and uh, right click anywhere here on the window or you can come up here and click add module either way but uh, you can just right click there and go to add and module you'll see we got a new module here named module 1 um, now this module is going to be our preferences module and by preferences module I mean we're gonna uh, load our preferences, save our preferences, format all our preferences and all our properties um, that we're gonna be writing out to the preferences file are gonna be contained within this module so let's go ahead and select module 1 here and rename it to preferences and hit return to save that and let's go ahead and double click on this module to open it up so now basically you see absolutely nothing and that's because it's an empty module now we can choose to add anything we want in here you can see up top we have add constant, add note, method, property, anything you want you can add it to this. Um, in our case we're going to go ahead and add uh, four properties um, and in this case they're going to be the width, the height, the left, and the top. So you can just click on this one let's go ahead and uh, change this to I'm going to do P for property and then win for window and then height for obviously the height and we're going to want to keep it as an integer um, and then equals and again this equals value is just going to be the default and let's go ahead and set it uh, to 300 since 300 was our default value anyways so you can hit return to save that and uh, again as a property we could have set this as a string or a double or an integer which an integer is a number a string is a string of text a double is basically just a longer number. There's lots of stuff we're going to set this to, but in this case we're just going to want to have it as an integer since it's going to be a pretty relatively small number. So let's go ahead and add another property. Let's name this P win width and keep that as an integer and let's change this to 300 and save that. Um, let's add a third property, property win top and let's just have this at uh, zero. And then again, property when left. Let's make this one zero as well. All right, so now we have these four properties here listed. So we can easily set them or get them as we need. Uh, so now let's go ahead and add a few methods here. And what a method is, uh, it's basically just a function that we can call that we're going to have it do something. So in our case, we're going to have uh, we're going to have three or two main functions and kind of one supporting function. Our two main ones are going to be load preferences and save preferences. And so whenever our, applica our application starts up, we're going to simply call the load preferences file or method. And uh, it's going to do everything we need it to do to get our window and our preferences loaded where we need it to be. So let's start off with our save preferences method. So go up here to the little toolbar up top and click the add method button. And you notice we have a couple of things we can we can change here. Um, first thing, let's do method name, and what we're going to do is change it to save prefs, since this is going to be our save preferences method. And uh, for parameters and return type, we're not going to have anything on uh, these two for this episode. We really don't need it. But if you come over here to the right side, you notice these three buttons here: a little globe, a little caution sign, and a little uh, red circle with a white line I guess um, and as I roll my mouse over if you look in the bottom left hand side of the window here you'll notice what each button does and this first one is called a uh, global method what a global method means is that I can call this save preferences method from anywhere in the application 
I basically, you know, if, if I'm in window main, since our module here is not part of window main, it's its, it's own entity or its own object, the save prefs method is not within window main, it's within preferences. So if I set this to a global method, um, then window main will simply be able to call, um, you know, save prefs. Um, window main will simply be able to call save prefs, uh, and all the preferences will get saved. But in our case, uh, we're going to want to do the second one here. And uh, what sec what the, what a public method it means is that in order to call save prefs, um, whatever is going to be using this has to call the preferences method first and then use a dot operator which is going to give us a list of everything within preferences and then save prefs so basically let's say this was window uh, main here uh, we'd have to type preferences which would access our preferences module and then put a dot and then do save prefs and uh, the difference in that as opposed to being global or being public um, is that it makes it a bit more secure uh, and kind of organizes things so you know exactly where you know your safe prefs uh, method is coming from and and you know if you have 100 modules you don't have to figure out where your uh, safe preferences method is and this last one here um, is a private method and a private method means that only other objects within this preferences module can access safe prefs so if I were to change this here to uh, to public well here let me sh let me show you we come over here to window main if I just go to the open event here um, and I do preferences so I'm accessing the preferences module now and I do dot save prefs you notice it automatically completes for us that means it can actually see the see the method but if I delete this and I come back over here to the preferences uh, module changes to private switch over here you notice I can still access the preferences module but I no longer see the save preferences method. So we're going to go ahead and keep that at um, we're going to keep that at public here, just to kind of organize things a bit. And let's go ahead and save that, and we can just delete this. So we're going to introduce quite a few new ideas within the save preferences um, method here. So if you get confused about anything, just go ahead and uh, rewind the video and uh, play this over, because I'm going to try and go as slow as I can and try and explain everything uh, as much as I can. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about the, the kind of the process that we're going to go through here. Um, Real Basic contains uh, a, a class type called text input stream and text output stream. Now what the two of those are, a text input stream, um, or I'm sorry, a text output stream allows you to uh, basically write out text to a file, um, or write out anything basically you want to a file, it doesn't have to be text, it could be a, you know, whether uh, any type of string, an integer, you know, anything you wanted. Um, and in order to save out to a file, we're going to need to create a new text output stream. Um, just like you would any other variable so you know we're gonna have to initialize it up top here um, and give it a variable name um, and it's pretty simple uh, to use a text output stream um, and now the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna have a what's called a folder item class and what a folder item class allows us to do is uh, reference a file you know within the operating system allows us to open it up allows us to basically reference its location on the hard drive and again, we have to uh, initialize it up top here and assign it a variable in order to use it within our code. And it sounds pretty complicated again, but it's actually not uh, once you see how it's done. Um, so the first thing we're going to do with the safe preferences, um, safe preferences module here, our method here, is uh, set these four properties to reflect what window main are are at the current time. So you may you may think to yourself, well, why why don't we just you know change these while um, this is being executed or while this is being resized? Well, it's really you really don't need it to since uh, safe prefs isn't going to get called every time you're resizing your window. You just need it to be called whenever the user quits the application or whenever you want them to uh, actually save it manually. 
Um, so in this case, if we skip down a few lines here, we can just go to uh, p win height uh, equals w main dot height. And it's just like we did with uh, referencing our static text here, um, except we don't need to convert it since this is an integer as well, and this is an integer here. And we're going to do this for all the properties here. So p win width equals w main dot width. I spelled these two and p win left equals w main dot left and finally p win top equals w main dot top all right so simple enough so now as soon as the safe prefs method gets called basically all this is going to execute um, and all these properties are going to get set to uh, their appropriate values so now that we have those set, let's go ahead and um, talk about the uh, folder item and text output stream um, classes. So let's go ahead and initialize each one of those. So if you remember from episode two, we have dim. And generally with a folder item, you just do f as its variable name since you're only going to you know, need to reference it. You know, you need to use one folder item generally within each method. Um, you can use as, and then you'll notice it attempts to autocomplete there as folder item. And then we're going to come down here again and do dim t just for text as text output stream. So now you still may not understand that, and uh, that's all right. I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what those are going to do. So now we have these two initialized here. Um, I guess for this for this line of code. Or for these, this block of code here, let's go ahead and add a comment. We're going to do that just like that. Let's say uh, set window properties. Alright, so that's commented. That's good. Remember, it's always good practice to comment your code. And for anybody who's going to go back and read it, if even if not yourself, you know, for anybody who's going to go back and look at your code, at least they know what you were thinking or what you were doing at the time. So this next block, let's go ahead and uh, open up a file stream. So let's go ahead and add a comment here. Say open file stream. And basically what we're going to be doing now is um, we're going to look for a file. Um, in this case it's going to be preferences.txt. So we're going to save all this stuff into a text file. So we're going to look for preferences.txt. If it's not if it's not there, we're going to go ahead and create it. And if it is there, we're just going to go ahead and open it up and write to it, or just write over it. Um, so, again, we're going to come up here and reference f as a folder item. So we're going to do f equals, and then we're going to want to tell f um, what the name of the folder is, or what, or I'm sorry, what the name of the file is that we're going to that we're going to want. So in this case, it's going to be preferences. Dot text. Now we're going to need to put quotes around this since it's a it's a proper name. Or, or it's the name of a file and not an actual command. So f equals preferences.txt. Now, in order to tell f what it wants to, what it needs to do with this, with this name here, um, uh, Real Basic offers a, a method called get folder item, and get folder item will actually set its uh, the file that it's going to be working with to preferences.txt here. So we can just go ahead and do get folder item, and we're going to put some parentheses around here. And if you don't understand uh, this exactly, if you go up here to help and you come to language reference, this is a useful tool, very, very useful tool that uh, Real Software has included in their software. And you can just come up here to the uh, to the search field. You notice if I put get folder item and hit return, it'll bring us up with a list of everything. And you can just click on get folder item here, and you can read a lot more about um, about how to use it and what exactly it does. You notice here it says uh, use to access an item in a folder or directory and uh, I really don't want to confuse you guys with this too much now um, so I'm just going to go ahead and close this but basically we're just referencing preferences.txt within a folder and uh, since I don't have any uh, slashes in front of this or, or actual folder directory it's going to be looking in the directory that our application is in so if uh, let's say our application was on our desktop, it'd be looking on our desktop for preferences.txt. So now the next thing we're going to do, 
uh, is we're going to switch to the T variable here, the text output stream, and we're going to tell T to create a new text file, preferences.txt. Um, and what that's going to be doing is even if preferences.txt already exists, it's going to just overwrite it immediately, which is what we want it to do generally because we really don't need to save any of the old preferences since we're just going to be updating them. So in order to do that, we're going to do T equals and then uh, the create text file method is contained within a folder item class. So we're going to do f dot create text file. So basically, our text output stream is going to be going to this newly created text file here, preferences.txt. So it's kind of a kind of a backwards loop there, but uh, it works. So we can go ahead and save this. Um, and uh, the final thing to do um, with our uh, text output stream here is to write something out to the file. And now before I write any of this data here, I'm just going to show you guys an example of uh, how to write. So um, to write a line out to our text file. So, so right now our uh, T has this preferences.txt file open already and we're ready to write to it basically. So we can just do T dot write line and so what write line does is just basically all we have to do is pass write line a string and we'll just write that string out to the file so we open up quotations here let's just do hello world and then finally we have to do t.close and what t.close does is just closes out our file and basically frees up our memory so um, Let's switch back to window main here and let's create a new push button right here at the bottom. It's going to say save pref or just save just to allow us to manually control and test uh, when our when our file gets saved. So you can just go ahead and double click on push button there. And I'd say just drag it right about there. Let's change the caption here to save and hit return to set that. And now let's double click on uh, this push button here and go into the open method. You notice, or I'm sorry, the action method. You'll notice we're in the action method there. And let's go ahead and reference preferences.save. Now, you remember we got a references. We got a. We have to reference it as preferences.save prefs as opposed to just save prefs. You notice it won't allow us to do just save prefs. So if we go here and go to the beginning, preferences.save prefs. So now, as soon as we click that button, um, this method right here is going to get called a new. The, the f these properties are going to get set here, which is not going to do anything noticeable um, right now. Uh, and then this preferences.txt file is going to get created. We're going to write out the line hello world, and our text output stream is going to close. So basically, the program you're not going to see do anything, but if we look at the desktop, you'll see the file get created. So let's go ahead and save this. Now, as since I saved this, uh, this project in the documents folder, um, our preferences file is going to get created in the documents folder. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this and just minimize real basic here. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my uh, my documents folder just so you guys can watch. So here I have my uh, real base my project file and this my application debug is this actual application right here. So basically whenever you debug within an application within within real basic um, it creates just a little debugging application right here. So as soon as I hit save here you can watch somewhere around here and it preferences file should get saved and yep there it is right there uh, preferences.txt just as we said it and if I double click to open this you notice we got hello world right there so we have our file saving out the way we want it to and uh, it wasn't too hard um, as you notice so let's go ahead and quit this and uh, I'm gonna keep this here just so you can see how um, how it gets overwritten, and you notice our debug application uh, was deleted as soon as we quit that that program. So, go ahead and switch to Real Basic again. Uh, let's come over here to our preferences method, um, and instead of t line hello world, uh, I'm going to go ahead and output all these uh, properties right there. So we're going to, um, since I want each one to be on its own separate line, you're going to have to have four separate t dot lines. So after each right line it basically has a carriage return and skips to the next line and so um, in this case we can do uh, p when height 
but uh, t.writeLine needs a string, so let's go ahead and use the string converter method here to go ahead and convert that to a string. And we can just copy this and uh, do it, I guess, three more times. Let's say uh, p win width, p win top, and p win left. Alright, so let's save this. So now whenever our preferences dot save prefs get called, our properties get set depending on the uh, value of our window main there. Our file is created or overwritten in our case. Uh, and then these properties, or these properties right here, are accessed and converted to a string and then written out to our file and then the file is closed. So let's go ahead and run this and I'll show you exactly what goes on. So we can minimize real basic there. And again, right now, in the preferences file, we have hello world. So as soon as I hit the save button, nothing happened uh, that you can see here. But when I open this, you notice we have our width, our height of 300, 300, and our left of fort 18 there. So great, that worked perfectly. So we can go ahead and quit text edit there and uh, quit our debugging application and switch back to real basic so we have our properties writing out the way we want them to so now I'm going to explain to you uh, a special way to kinda to kinda organize your preferences file so let me go ahead and uh, open that back up now if you were just to open up this preferences file and see these four numbers you'd have no idea what they mean right so um, an easy way uh, to kinda give these uh, these values um, a name within this preferences file and not actually interfere with uh, the value itself um, is to use a special a special uh, naming convention so what we're going to do is we're going to add just an open bracket here and we're going to do p win height and then close that and then we're going to come to the end here and we're going to use an open bracket again and we're going to use a slash to basically tell um, our program that this is the end of win height and we're going to do p win height again so whenever we're reading this we're going to basically search for p win height we're going to read what's between these two lines and then we're going to look for the end of p win height so we're going to do that for all four of these right here so we can just close this and don't save and come back here to our right line um, functions there and let's add um, those those properties there so let's do p win height and then close that and then the plus operator is going to add our height property and we can add to the end of that p win height and let's do the same thing for all three of these we can just do um, P win width. And win top. And finally left. And then we're going to add the closing uh, brackets here. Now you may be wondering why it's important to do this. Um, for one thing, imagine if you had you know, let's say 10,000 properties that you needed to to write out to a file, you know, and uh, you know, you needed to debug it somehow or figure out where exactly you know, your error was in the program or you even just needed to, to kind of read the properties really quickly so uh, let's go ahead and save this and run it and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about so, so let's minimize this and come over here and go to save and we should have all this data in there and we do that's perfect and now you'll see we have p win height here uh, p win width of 300 uh, top of 129 which is perfect and a left of 524 so that's that's basically exactly how we're going to want our preference files to be um, so now whenever uh, we're going to open up the application uh, we can simply uh, read that preferences file and basically load it how we need to. So let's go ahead and close this.
and switch back to real basic. So we're pretty much done with uh, our save prefs method here. Um, the next thing we're going to want to do is uh, switch to our load prefs method or, or add our load prefs method. So we'll come up here to uh, the toolbar and let's click the add method button and let's add a load prefs. And again, we want this one to be public since we want to access it through the preferences ma our module. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, get started with this one. Again, we're going to need, um, like save preferences, we're going to need a folder item and a text stream. But instead of a text output stream, we're going to use a text input stream since we're going to be reading in. So again, we can use um, f as a folder item. So it's dim f as folder item. And then we can do dim t as text input stream. And now we're going to want to do the same thing like we did in save press. We're going to want to set f to our folder item um, of preferences.txt. So we can do f equals get folder item again and then uh, the name of our preferences file which is preferences.txt close that and close the parentheses right there. The way we're going to check um, if the file exists or not is uh, it's actually pretty clever. Uh, skip down a couple lines. We're going to use an if bracket or an if statement here. Um, we're going to say we're going to say if f is less than or greater than nil, then now what nil is is nil is the same thing as nothing. So if f is uh, what greater than or I'm sorry, what less than and greater than together like that means is not equal to. So if f is not equal to nothing, then we can go ahead and load that file up. Um, and then we can just put an end if here. So basically what we're going to want to do in here is use the uh, text input stream to open up the file. So basically this is like a, a first uh, fail safe there. So if this folder item does not exist then we don't even need to run any of this. So now we can do um, t equals f dot and then uh, again folder item contains an open as text file method and basically that allows t, our text input stream, to open our file preferences.txt here f so f is referencing preferences.txt um, as a text file and allows us to read in the data that's in there so we can do a open as text file um, and then again we're gonna have another fail safe here that's gonna double check that our file opened you know opened safely and opened uh, open properly um, that we have the ability to read from it so we're gonna have another does not equal statement here. So if, if t is not equal to nil, then um, then basically in here we're going to have it read the data. But else we're going to add a comment here that says could not open preferences file, and then close out this if block. So basically, if we couldn't read in the file, then we're not going to do anything. We're just going to load the defaults of the window. Otherwise, we're going to load the saved preferences from, from before um, and set the properties of the window to that. So the only reason we'd get here would be if uh, the file was corrupted for some reason or if the user actually ran the program for the first time since there wouldn't be the file even existing. Um, so let's, um, let's go ahead and set these properties here to the data that's contained within the text file. Now this is going to get a bit tricky because of the way we uh, we added um, these lines right here, but uh, in the end it's going to actually work out pretty well. We could just do wmain.height equals t.readLine. However, um, since wmain.height uh, requires an integer, I mean t.readLine is a string containing um, this line of text right here, it wouldn't really work. You wouldn't have to set it. So basically what we're going to need to do is parse out this middle uh, integer right there, the 300 right here, um, that's between p win height, uh, the opening p win height, and the closing p win height here. So let's go ahead and close this. Uh, and we're going to create a special function. It's going to actually return an integer to us that's going to allow us to set this really easily. So let's go ahead and remove this. And let's create a new method up here. And we're going to call this um, method parse line. And now 
here's where we're going to actually uh, use this parameters and return type fields here. Um, for the parameters, any data you want to basically hand to this um, function to work with. So from the outside here, from the load prefs um, method, we're going to want to read in the line from the from the text input stream and actually pass that line or that string of text over to this parse line method here um, so that it can work uh, with that with that data so in order to do that we can uh, basically we're gonna name we're gonna have a variable here line as a string now you can name this pretty much anything you want this is just what we're gonna reference it within this method as uh, it doesn't have to necessarily match anything with the load preferences method um, so now basically the parse line method it requires a string to be passed to it um, in order to function and now we're going to want a string and then we're going to also want um, a name of the property that we're looking for and so in this case um, it's going to be the name you know contained within each one of these now we're not going to want the brackets we're simply going to want the name so uh, you know, p win height, p win width, p win top. So basically, the name of the property we're going to want to we're going to request it. So in that case, we're going to have also um, name as string. And you'll understand a bit more what I'm talking about once we start writing. And then return type is um, what type of data gets returned. Now, if you're kind of confused about what I mean by returned and passing, the way a method works. Um, is that if I call a method from here, so if I say parse line um, and then I were to pass it, let's say uh, t dot write or read line and then let's say p win height and then close that. So basically I'm calling the parse line function here, the method, um, and I'm sending it this these two pieces of data t.readline, so basically the first line that we read out of the file, and then this word, p win height. And we can allow parse line to do whatever we want with that, with that chunk of data. So now within this function we have those two pieces of data, but in this case they're referenced as line and as name. And uh, line being um, t.readline and the name being p win height. Uh, and then once we have done everything with the data, we can return basically we come back from the execution here um, and parse line returns uh, some sort of data so we can set um, p win height equal to and then we're gonna need parse line to return an integer right so we come over here to return type and type in integer Now you don't need to set a, a name or a variable name for this since it doesn't really matter you just need to return it so basically now parse line is going to set p win height to whatever it gets returned to. So let's come over here to parse line and start writing. Um, start writing the, the stuff we're going to need in here. So we're going to introduce a few, a few new um, methods and uh, string operators. And basically, what a string operator is is different things that we can do to a string um, to kind of get data out of it. We're going to want to create a few new variables here. Um, just go with me and I'll explain a little bit more of what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and uh, let's dim uh, start and put a comma and finish. And again, you can use the comma to do more than one variable. Um, we're going to set these as integers. And let's go ahead and set these to zero as a default. And come down a few lines. And let's go ahead and start with the start variable. So now, real basic contains um, a function titled in str or in string. So the in string. Uh, method requires two things to be passed to it. A source string, so basically the string you're going to be doing the searching in, and then a line in the string you want to search for, or like a word in the string you want to search for. And in our case, we're going to want to um, search for, let me open this up again, uh, we're going to want to search for um, basically less than p win height and greater than. So this piece of data right here, so um, that's what we're going to want to be searching for, and then we're going to want to be searching for it in this line string that we passed. So basically, we're getting past this whole piece of data right here, just the highlighted, not the whole chunk, just the first line. And we're going to want to search for this right here. So in order to do that, we can uh, do in string, and then 
pass in string line, and line is that whole string right there, and then in comma, since name is only the name of the property, we're going to need to add that less than and greater than sign to it. So we can have uh, less than plus name plus greater than. And then close that off, parentheses. So now basically we're passing in string this line right here plus um, this right here, P1 height with uh, two symbols on either end. So now it's going to in string is going to search through this line right here, so it's going to find it right here, and it's going to give us the position um, within the string that it's located at. And so it should return 1. Um, so by position, I mean um, as far as characters into the string. So, you know, if I was searching for the, for the you know, the, the number 3 or whatever, it would be, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, spaces into the string, but in our case um, this is going to be one into the string since it's the very first thing. Um, so start is getting set to one there. So now let's go ahead and set um, finish to the same thing, but we're going to want to add the slash here. And that's the whole reason for adding the slash here is that if we didn't have a slash and it was just like that, um, as soon as you did in string, it would return one again. It wouldn't return our ending, um, our ending string here. So um, it basically allows us to to decipher the difference between the beginning and the end of our line. So let's do the same thing here. We're going to do in string line and then put a slash there plus name since it's going to be the same, and then close that. All right, so um, in string returns the beginning of uh, of your string. So to give you an example here, we have let's copy this line. Okay, so start is going to return one right here. Finish is going to return right here. So we're going to want to copy just this data. So in order to do that, we need to set our cursor, or imagine like an imaginary cursor. We need to set our imaginary cursor from the beginning here to the end right here just the cursor we're not going to highlight any of this we're just going to set it right here as the starting point so in order to do that we need to get the length of this string and basically set our cursor position to right here and in order to do that um, we can use the len property um, and len basically if you pass len a string um, it returns the length of that string in characters. So start's going to be our starting position of the cursor. So uh, right now start is positioned right here. So we're going to want to do it. Go ahead and count how many characters is in p win height. So let's do plus len. And since p win height is referenced as name within this method, we can do name. So um, now we started here. So we have uh, in string line. Um, and then this name here, so it's still going to stay here. And then we're going to have name, and name is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 characters long. So from the start here, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 um, characters. So now we still have two uh, characters here at the end. And the reason we have those two is, remember, we added these two brackets here, or these two uh, symbols here. So we're just going to want to come to the end here and do plus 2. So now we were right here, so now it's just going to go 1 and 2. So now our starting position is right here at the beginning of the 3, and that's perfect. That's where we're going to want it to be. And our finishing cursor is going to be right here at the beginning of P1 height, and that's perfect. We're not going to want it to be here. We're going to want it to be here since we're only going to want to highlight this amount of data. So basically, we're setting a starting bracket and an ending bracket and copying everything in between. Um, so let me skip this down a few lines here. Um, so now len requires uh, three things, the source string, um, the start position, and then the length of uh, data you want to read, or length, how many characters you want to read from it basically. So let's pass it line, since line is going to be our source string, and start, since start is going to be our starting position, and start is going to be again right here, right at the beginning of the three. Now you may be, may be wondering how we're going to know how, how long this is, and that's the whole reason we have the finishing cursor. Um, uh, if you sub simply subtract um, our finish 
uh, value from our start value, you'll be returned with this right here. So to give you to show you, our finish would be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 from the start. So if you have 15 here, minus, and then our start position would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, minus 12 equals 3. So hence we have three characters we need to read. So in order to do that, you come up here and you do finish minus start and close that out. And generally I like to put spaces there just to kind of organize things up. And so since len returns something, we actually have to, we have to actually um, set this to something. Um, and since this is the data basically this whole function was for, we can simply return it to our load preferences file, our load preferences method here. But uh, since it returns a string and we need to return an integer, we need to go ahead and use the val method, which is just like the str method, but converts a string to an integer. Uh, we can s simply uh, put val around len here, and that'll convert this 300 from a 300 string to 300 val uh, 300 integer. And then we can just put the word return right there. And we can just return um, this value of the red in data right here back to the function that called it. We can just delete this right here. So I know it's probably still a bit confusing, but read through this slowly, kind of go step by step, figure out what each thing is doing, and it will become really, really clear to you. Uh, so let's go ahead and save that. Make sure you save that. And I'm going to come back up to this load prefs here. So here, um, we can start to understand exactly what's going on. So let's start from the beginning here. So we uh, open up a preferences file here. If our file exists, uh, let's go ahead and open up as a text file. Um, if it opened up correctly, you know, there were no errors. Uh, we come here, let's start at the end. We do a t.readline, so we read that first line, right? And since we're wanting to set our win height here, and we know our first line is p win height, uh, we need to pass our function parse line uh, that read in line and the variable that we're trying to set right so we enter into the parse line function with these two bits of data here so we're into the parse line function now we have here let's switch back to load press so we have t.read line as the first variable p win height as a second variable so from now on that t.read line is going to be line and that p um, when height or p when width whatever is going to be referenced as name. So now we're into the function here um, and we create these two variables up top and we set these variables to the start position and the finish position right and then we locate um, you know our data that we need uh, we convert that data to a um, to an integer and return that integer back all the way back to load preferences and set that equal to win height. So you got to kind of work in reverse here. It's a bit confusing, but again, read through it slowly, kind of do the steps, even do the steps on a piece of paper um, if you want, uh, and uh, you'll start to understand it if you do it a couple times. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same thing here for all four of our variables. Um, so let's just copy and paste that. And we can change this to p win uh, let's see, what's the order? Width, top, and left. Width changes to width again. This can be top. Top, and finally left. And you see, the reason we wrote this parse line function would be if we didn't we'd have to do for each one of these we'd have to do this we have to copy this code four times and basically it's just it's a lot easier it saves us a lot of time uh, and a lot of screen space and it actually executes a really uh, a bit faster so we have this data we've set um, these preferences or I'm sorry these properties to the data that was in the saved file and now we're gonna simply want to uh, set the window properties accordingly so we can just uh, skip down a few lines here. We can say uh, wmain.height equals pwin height 
W main width equals P when width. I misspelled that. W main dot top equals P win top. And finally, W win or W main dot left equals P win left. Now, you could have skipped these four steps and simply set, um, set these properties to this right here. So you could have done a w win dot height equals parse line t dot read line comma p one height but um, you know whatever it's you can you can see just the difference here uh, with setting properties and retrieving properties so by um, by setting the window properties here we're actually gonna be resizing the window on the screen so as soon as we do this uh, the window is gonna resize itself and uh, relocate itself on the on the operating system desktop or, or wherever it's located. Um, so we're pretty much done with the load prefs here. Uh, we can go ahead and close the preferences module there. And I understand that was a bit tricky, but again, go over it, you know, read through it, practice it, and you'll you'll start to understand it a bit more. Um, so now let's go ahead and add a add a load button in here so I can show you um, exactly what's going on. So let's locate the push button uh, control here. Double click on it. We can add the button. Drag it just right there. And let's change the caption to load. Hit return. Um, and let's open up the action method. Now let's do preferences dot load prefs. And we can save this. Come up here. And let's go ahead and uh, change the names of these two buttons to uh, their appropriate names. We can just do uh, btn save. And this one can be btn load up here in the property pane and we're not really going to be referencing these buttons but again it's just good practice and maybe we can go ahead and uh, bring the window uh, height up here just a bit and that looks about good and let's save that um, now when the user is going to be resizing we're going to want these two buttons to to kind of resize with the window I guess so let's go ahead and uh, click these two and let's lock them to the bottom and to the right side of the window. So let's say right and lock bottom. And we can go ahead and save that. So now oh actually this needs to be mid instead of len, I'm sorry. So now we're returning the mid um, of the line here instead of the length of the line. So let's go ahead and save that and close out. And so now our load and our save buttons are going to be working uh, to load the preferences and to save the preferences. So let's go ahead and, and uh, let's quit out of this so we don't get any errors there. And let's go ahead and run this. So in order to test out these load and save buttons here, let's go ahead and drag our window here to the center. Uh, and let's, um, let's go ahead and save the settings that it is right now. So we're at 300 and 227. Um, and our left and our top. So let's go ahead and hit save. So now our file got saved and our properties got written out to the file. So now if I move this over here, um, let's say drag this down here, um, I didn't hit the save button so our old preferences are still saved in there. So as soon as I hit the load button our window should move back over to the left and this should come back up to uh, 300 and 227. And you notice it did that perfectly. Now our uh, our values didn't get updated here because I didn't uh, we didn't put the 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 proper code in the uh, in the resized window, but you can see that the window obviously obviously is reading the uh, preferences appropriately. And you know, if I bring the, bring this out here, hit load, it resets it. Or out here, and put it over here, brings it back to the same thing. So our load and our save functions are working perfectly. So we can go ahead and quit this now. Generally, if you're using an application, you're not going to have a load preferences and a save preferences button. You're going to want them to do it automatically. Um, so that's very easy to do. All we have to do is switch over to our project uh, tab here. And this is our first time we're going to introduce the app class here. And so basically the back end of the application. Um, you notice if you come over here to the property value pane, you can see lots and lots of uh, preferences and properties about 
um, about the application right now but let's go ahead and open this up um, and uh, drop down this event handler uh, here if it's not already opened and let's come to the open method right there now the open method um, is called as soon as the application is run even before any windows are open um, this is the very very first thing that is run and so basically in here we're going to want to read in our preferences um, so that our our windows get set accordingly and uh, everything gets set appropriately so we can simply do preferences dot load prefs so as soon as we call this window main is going to get set to the appropriate size as soon as the window opens we're not even going to have to hit the load preferences button so we can save that and so now we're going to want to save the preferences as soon as the window main closes so now we're not going to want to do it here in close because this is going to be when the application closes we're going to want to do it when window main closes so switch over here to window main uh, and just double click to get to the code view and locate the close method here and just click on the close method and let's do preferences dot save prefs and so now as soon as we close this window the preferences of the window will get saved out to the file and uh, we can quit the application and open it up and everything should hopefully be working the way we need it to so let's save that and go ahead and run it so now you'll notice the window started here instead of up here because it already automatically read in our preferences file that we had saved from the last time so if you notice if I move this over here maybe expand this a bit I'm not gonna hit the save button I'm simply gonna quit the application and all I have to do is run it again it should automatically open up right here so simply run it again and voila opens up right where we left it so you see it's pretty easy to write out to a file I know it seems like we did a lot but uh, I was just kind of explaining as I was going go back over read through the code here um, in, uh, in our uh, preferences module and kinda it, it doesn't look like too much but it is pretty detailed go through it read through it see the process that we took in order to get the results that we did and, uh, and you can sort of figure out exactly what we did and maybe you can even write your own um, preferences files as you need for your application so this is a pretty good start for um, text input streams, text output streams, folder items. There's a lot more detailed. Again, look at the language reference up here in your help menu. It's I can't even explain to you how much of a resource it is. I mean, it's it's pretty much the best resource you have. Um, play around with this. Make your own applications. Uh, submit them to the forums, guys. Get on the forums. Get on the site. Send me your comments. Send me your questions anything you need. If you have a question uh, about the project or you're confused, I'd be more than happy to help you. Um, definitely go up to the site, sign up, become a member, join the community and, uh, and help us out, help keep this uh, the best that it can be. For RBTV, I'm your host, George Bonish. Tune in next time. See ya.